All right, guys. Thanks for hopping on our team call here. Um, I want to get right into this. Got a super special guest. Got Hayden Hill. Um, and I want Hayden, if you could, in, in a second here, I want you to kind of just explain how you got into this, where you came from. Um, but first off, guys, and he probably won't tell you guys this, but he's he's two-time Hall of Famer, agency Hall of Fame, which means his agency is helping over doing over $10 million a year in, in, in volume, and he's an integrity partner as well. So get your notepads out and just get ready to take some notes because this is a lot of ways about to tell us is very valuable, and he's done a very good job in this industry. So Hayden, for one, thanks for getting on here. But if you could, man, just, just share a few things about where you started, how you got into this, and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um... So yeah, I basically started um, when I was like tw literally like almost 21. I was like 20 years old, a few months close to 21, um, coming out of college, and I be like I was a senior in college, about to graduate, and I'm like I don't know what I want to do with my life. And this guy I knew um, he he posted he was studying for his life insurance exam, and so I'm like okay cool, um, like I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him up and see you know what this whole thing's about. So I always tell people, like, I didn't choose the company I started with. They chose me up unlicensed. I was naive. I didn't know anything about anything. And basically, uh, I started with them. It was one of those companies where they gave you, you know, I got like 30 or 40 leads a month for free. Um, and I was at like a, you know, 40%, sometimes like 35% compensation. Um, and, you know, actually did pretty decent for my early 20s um you know it was it was a similar the whole insurance industry set up the same so you know uh learn how to sell policies um how to recruit how to train that whole jazz um but the problem i kept on having is one um we didn't have telesales it was only in person and so like we would recruit a bunch of agents i live in phoenix arizona so like we would recruit all our agents from phoenix they all went to college with us grew up with us like played baseball like people we knew um, and the problem was like, it's, there wasn't enough leads and because we couldn't do telesales, it was kind of like, well, we can only work in Arizona and like New Mexico and it's going to be hard. And so basically what happened is like, I was, I was doing okay. Um, but a lot of my friends, like people who come to business, it would just be like a rat, like a, like a freaking hamster wheel. Like they come in, they learn the script, they're, you know, fired up, they go on the field and they get their freaking teeth kicked in for the first month. And I'm talking like, not having like one bad week for like a whole month, like where they make no money. And it's like, I just didn't feel good about it. And so um, Nina, um, she, you know, she started working there probably like a year and a half, a year into uh, when I started. And, and from there, you know, we were kind of like, do this and we, we just need to get out of here. And so I actually basically like left the industry, got into medical device sales. We heard about FFL, Grady Paulson just hit senior, senior sales manager and we met and he was like, dude, I can offer you, you know, 105% comp, like super excited. And, um, we, you know, we thought it was too good to be true. We're like, there's no way a company can pay over a hundred percent. And if you think about it, you don't know, it makes sense. Like how can a company pay over a hundred percent? Cause they're only getting a hundred percent. Obviously we didn't know it goes way higher than that. So we sat on the sidelines, um, a couple of months after that, we started seeing people from our previous company, like doing really well here, issue paying, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 families a month. And we're like, dude, that like, how are they doing that? It must be like a different system or like something that's way different than what we had. And so Nina was basically like, you know, she was going to go back to school for nursing and she's like, I'll just get licensed and start selling part-time. Like worst case scenario, like, you know, after a month or two, I'm like, this isn't good. So she started selling part-time, um, started doing really well after that. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to start selling part-time. Um, did that for probably about seven or eight months. Um, and then at that point, like COVID started and uh, there was no like promotions with my, you know, medical device job. And I'm like, well, this is stupid. Like I'm, I'm sitting at home, like getting paid the same thing. It almost got boring. Like for me, like I always had that like entrepreneur, like I want more, like I want to be able to go out and make a, you know, impact and also a huge income. Like I just got so bored of the same thing day in and day out. It didn't matter if I sold a ton of accounts or I sold zero. I was pretty much still getting the same pay. And so after that happened, that the promotion passed over because of COVID, they couldn't, you know, promote anyone. I'm like, dude, screw this. Like, I'm just gonna go full time. And so I went full time in December of 2020, like mid December. And that's kind of when we started building the agency. Um, and then basically the rest is history.
Sure. Cool. Um, so, because I want to talk, because you guys have done both. I mean, you guys have both sold at a very high level. I think that's the most important thing, getting started, to be able to be profitable that way. But then a little bit later, I want to get into the building side of it, because obviously you guys have done a very good job there too, built a huge agency. So first off, man, could you just talk about like, when you have a brand new agent come in on your team or just any new agent that's getting started, you know, how do we, what are some of the things you talk about to help them get started quickly and selling, but then also being profitable to be able to stay in this business, of course. So just maybe hit on some of those things first off. Yeah. So um, once they pass their tests, like that's really when like the clock starts. And I always tell people like, you know, my managers and people that are wanting to build a team, like everyone has a time clock, dude. And like, we got to get people paid. And so like, there might be someone really good in the business and like coming in the business and, and they're trying to figure it out. And honestly, like if they don't get paid in like two weeks or three weeks, no matter how could they, how good they could have been, or they would have been, they're probably going to tap out and be like, you know what, I got to get a job or do something else. And so like, right. As soon as they get licensed, like we're getting them like, Hey, go get your state license. The day you get that, we're filling out contracting. Contracting is going to take you like 30 minutes, make sure. And we tell them a couple of days before, make sure you have a void check. That way we're not having to wait an extra day or two for you to go to the bank. And so have that once they fill out contracting, basically what I tell them is, you know, depending on your background and everything, if everything goes smoothly, you should get carrier contracts approved anywhere in the next like two or three days to the next like seven to 10 businesses. So like, I'm a big fan of like, once you get one or two, like you get prosperity or America or you get both in the first like two, three days, like, dude, you're, you're ready to go. Like, don't wait to have all seven or eight main carriers that we have. And so uh, during that time they're waiting, basically what we do is we have them plug into our new agent bootcamp. So they go, you know, onto our website, they basically complete that boot camp. They learn about telesales, they learn about in-person sales, they learn about, you know, leads, recruiting, objections, scripts, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that should probably take them like anywhere from like one to three days. If they're, you know, already a licensed agent, it'll probably be cake. They'll probably learn it in like a day or two. If they've never done anything like this, it might take them, you know, two, three, maybe four. But the point is once they finish that boot camp, in those two, three, four days, they should be getting carrier contracts either right before they're done or right as they're finishing. So from there, once they're done and they have one or two carrier contracts, basically what we're doing is we're doing like a, we call it like a on, new, new agent onboarding call. And it's just a one-on-one -on -one with basically the manager. And basically what we do is we get on Zoom, um, we share the screen, we basically show them, hey, this is how you log into the ILC. This is how you operate. This is how you buy leads. This is how you uh, manage leads. This is, you know, how to export them into, you know, your, your phone burner, your Zippo, like whatever you're using. Um, and then from there, basically role play scripts. So after that's done, um, the homework that I kind of give them is, hey, go on to scdemo.america.com. Go fill out a bunch of Eagle apps. Go fill out a bunch of, you know, term 125 cbo payment protector like whatever just you're getting whole life apps in and then also term because if they can fill out an eagle or a term with americo app that's going to be like 98 percent the same as pretty much every other carrier in terms of like what they have to input and stuff um so basically after they do that that same day now the next thing is like hey let's buy leads so, you know, I like to get the leads as soon as possible, just because one, like, you know, for new people, like I was nervous when I started, even though I had been doing it for years before, I never bought leads. And so I was nervous. I probably, if, if Nina wasn't like, dude, freaking buy leads, I would have probably waited a few days just because I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm going to wait for my next paycheck, like whatever the case is. And so that's one reason. But also the other reason is this, what we realized is new agents have so much stuff going on in their head. Like they're trying to learn products, they're trying to learn scripts or, you know, they're nervous or trying to learn leads. And a lot of the times, like before, when we would just basically end it there and be like, okay, you know, in the next day or two, you buy leads instead of like, hey, today, right now, let's buy leads is sometimes they would be like, uh, man, these, these YouTube final expense leads, like, you know, they're just, I don't, I don't know what script I'm using. Like, they're not that good. And I'm like, YouTube final expense. Like when, like, what are you talking about? 
yeah, the leads in the CRM that we talked about. I'm like, dude, we didn't talk. We talked about insane internet leads, one month, three month, one through three final expense and mortgage. And so that's something else is, you know, new agents get confused. They have a lot of stuff going on. So that's something else just to make sure they have the exact right leads that you feel will be best for their situation. Um, and then from there, basically we're down on the phone. And so if they're uh, doing telesales, like, you know, my whole thing is like, we're all independent. You can do whatever the heck you want. And those people that, you know, issue pay 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a month, dude, you can, we can never talk. Like you have it figured out. You don't need my help. You don't need to go to an office. You need to go on Zoom. But like for 95% of people when they're starting out, if you're doing telesales or in person, like dude, go into an office or get on Zoom. Because especially with new agents, we figured out is, dude, if, and we all know how it is. If, if you get a couple of no's or you're not getting answered or you're getting hung up on, like you might dial up like an hour or two of the new agent and be like, geez, like this is hard. I'm going to take a break. And then, you know, if you keep on doing that, what are they going to do? They're going to call you Utah and be like, dude, I can't get a sale. Like, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. And you're like, okay, how much, you know, how much, how many dials do you make? Oh, I don't know. Maybe like 80 and you're like 80, like in the hour or like, no, like 80 throughout the whole day. And so if we just can manage expectations and make sure they're plugging in, because the reality of it is like our guys that are doing, um, you know, telesales, our thing is like a thousand dials a day or a thousand dollars. You plug them in a phone burner, you plug them in a Zippo, you're calling, you're doing the auto dialers. Like, dude, there is literally no chance that if you dial for seven to eight hours a day, you're not going to at least make one sale. And so as long as that activity is there, they, sh they should do just fine. Got it. That's good stuff. Um, so what is majority of your agency running? Is it, you said a lot of aged internet like what, what is your uh, kind of talk a little bit more about the kind of the lead types and why that's kind of where you get people started. And just honestly, man, just from your experience being in this and seeing how much things change and how we have to adapt in this business, just talk a little bit about the reasoning behind that type of lead and whatnot. Yeah. So in terms of the CRM, um, I think most of our guys are buying, um, buying a little bit of everything. The main ones are going to be like, we love the beneficiary leads. If you guys haven't tried those out, that's the highest quality internet lead in the CRM, even outside of any vendor that I've found. So that's a hot commodity. You know, people try to grab them while they're still in there. Um, besides that, you know, one through three months, like if a new agent doesn't have that much money, like one through three months are great because you can get a ton of at bats in, especially if they're the discount code, you can get them for like pennies on the dollar. Um, you know, besides that, of course, one through three month mortgage and final expense, that's a great value because at one time it was a 40, 60, 80, you know, $85 lead. Um, and then outside of that, like, you know, we, we like, uh, Nectar, we like smart financial. Um, you know, I think, I think one of the things, like I had a new guy yesterday that I'm really excited about, and he's been watching all the videos and everything. And he's like, so like, what, what's the secret sauce? Like, you know, like, do you, like, what lead vendor do you guys do? Like, do you guys all run mortgage? Like all this kind of stuff. And like, I'll be the first one to say like, dude, last year, like I, you know, wrote almost 500 and I would say probably half my flow was a mix of new and then like the aged mortgage and the CRM. So I think those leads are phenomenal. However, I think a big reason why our team has continued to grow while some teams have gone backwards is like, dude, we're all seeing the housing market and we're all seeing the rates. And we're all seeing the mortgages. We were feasting the last three years because of refinance and home rates were so low. There was mortgage flow like crazy. What our team, you know, really did was we really got, we really focused on internet leads. And I think because of that, especially with telesales, it works. Now, if you're like, dude, you guys have some guys that write, you know, way more than I ever did that are in person and doing that, dude, if you're doing that, keep on doing it. Like, why would you ever change it? If you're writing 30 a month, don't ever change to something else unless you want to like, you know, supplement a little bit. But for a majority of the people we realize is, dude, when you're doing telesales, you're putting them in your dialer. If you can stay between those four to 11, four to $12 leads, those sting a lot less when they hang up or you can't get a hold of them rather than the 80, $85 one where if you're in person, you can go knock on their door and resolve it. Then that's a different situation. But if you guys are in Wisconsin and there's someone in Alaska and you're trying to close them over the phone, well, dude, you can't like, you could go to their house, I guess, but like, you're probably never going to go to their house. 
And so that's just, I think that's one of the main things, dude, that I think has really helped us is there's no dips because, you know, no secret, dude. Internet leads, is it the best quality? No. Is it the worst quality? No. It's a lead. But the great thing about internet leads in terms of one, having enough, but two, scaling a business is they're pretty much infinite. Like there's an infinite supply to keep on scaling and having your agents be able to get pretty much at any, any hour of the day. Sure. Good stuff. Um, what about, so with, with like your direct mail leads, like if you have them coming in and like you said, Alaska and you're in Wisconsin, obviously you can't door knock and you can't resolve them. You could, but it's not very likely with internet leads. Um, what are some of the things you guys are doing or using like software to really target as, and get as many contacts as possible, whether it be through, you know, auto dialer, drip text message, email stuff, like what kind of software do a lot of your guys use in order to, to kind of reach as many people as possible and how, how useful is that from what you've seen? Yeah. So I think, you know, there, there's a couple ones out there. Our team in the last couple of months, like, you know, phone burner is great for calling. Definitely like use that. Um, our main thing we've been using is a thing called Zippo. It's a dialer and a text and like a virtual, like license credibility thing. And so I think it's important just because especially like if you're an agent, you know, you can manually text them, but the chances that you're going to reach out to leads that are like six months old, 12 months old, 18 months old, like, dude, you're probably never going to reach out to them. So with like these text drip campaigns, they're great because agents that have been here for, you know, a little bit or a while that have like thousands or hundreds of leads, put them in a drip campaign, let the software basically, you know, send out the text and everything. And then from there, you're going to probably get a couple extra sales you wouldn't have got. Um, and then the other thing that we've been using is that, you know, they have a basically a credibility like license page where, you know, what's the main thing on telesales that you get hung up on or people don't give you social and banking. And why is that? Well, dude, like Ty, you're a closer. Evan's a closer. Like I'm a closer. Like we get in front of someone, like we're probably not going to have someone that says, oh, I don't believe you are who you say you are. Because when we showed them our license, but two are sitting right in front of them versus over the phone, they can't see you. And so, and rightfully so, like, especially seniors, like, I don't know personally, like if I would trust someone that did that, unless they sent me their license, they, they, you know, showed me that they're legitimate. So that's been something to basically just send them to say, Hey, here's our licenses. Here's who we are. Here's a picture of us that I think is just an extra level of professionalism and it helps with those kind of, you know, objections that you would get if you didn't have something like that. Sure. Okay, cool. And then, and then one more thing, it's not really a software, but work spots, dude. Like if you're, if you're buying CRM leads for $100 a month, the work spots thing, dude, like right now it's like 30% every, almost every single day off either instance, beneficiary, one through three months, whatever. And so it's like, if you buy leads once a month from the CRM for a couple hundred bucks, use the discount because you're going to save more than a hundred. Like we, in terms of like profitability and being smart, if you're not using that, like you're just kind of wasting money that you could be saving to buy extra leads. Sure. That makes sense. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about on the building side too, because um, dude, when you first started and we have a lot of people on here that they want to build, they want to build a team by right now they're issuing 20, 30 a month. What is some of your pointers or just tips from someone that's like, they it's just them right now and they want to build something what are some things in terms of you know recruiting war markets selling social media things that they can be doing to get from just themselves to you know vice president vp 150 yeah so yeah so i think i think you guys got to understand the game you're playing um you know there's obviously and and we're we're fortunate and i think it's almost a detriment sometimes to us where like, do we have to recruit? Like, no, if you're good at selling, you can pretty easily make a multiple six figure income if you're working hard and you're buying leads and making the dials. So that's fantastic. Most people don't have that. But I think a lot of the times, like, dude, we've all been there. Like you make, you know, two or three or four sales in a day. It's like, well, should I, should I recruit at night? Like I, like I know I'm supposed to, should I send out my hundred messages? You know what? Like I'm tired. I made four sales today. I'm going to get a couple grand in my America tomorrow. Like, no, I'm good. And that's something, guys, that you have to remember. It's like there's two sides of the comp plan. There's the selling side 
and there's the building side and the selling is very profitable, but it's only on you. The building side is even more profitable and it's not only on you. And so like, I always use the example, like, you know, Stephen E dude, his mom and his dad died within like months of each other. They're sick. So he was going from Vegas to California, like every single week to be with them while they're in the hospital and his business grew the most in that time that he was having to do that. And he, he'll be the first one to tell you guys, he's like, dude, like he was like a multiple hall of fame, hall, uh, hall of fame producer too. He's like, dude, if I want to build a business, like I wouldn't mind making any income because I had to be there with them. And so that's important, but realizing that there's two sides of the comp plan guys, like when you're, you know, the first thing you got to do is you got to sell because why would someone want to join the business if they can't, you know, see what you're doing and learn from you? Like that's, that's your most powerful recruiting tool is selling because, the reality is if someone can come here and some people it's a couple grand a month, some people it's 10, 20 grand a month. If someone can see that I can make a six figure, multiple six figure income by selling. And then if I want to build a business, I can do that too. Dude, that's the best recruiting tool you guys have. And so like, if you're selling a bunch, dude, I would like, I honestly, I think that, you know, the thing that me and Nina did the best is we were obnoxious dude on social media. Like we made, we didn't, we did not give a crap. Who thought we were annoying? Who thought we post too much about FFL? Because we're like, dude, like we have nothing to hide. Like this is, it's not like a pipe dream. Like we're actively doing it. And if anyone wants to see it, we'll show bank statements. We'll get on Zoom with them. We'll show them whatever. So starts with selling, but then also guys, making it a priority to recruit is so, so, so important. Because it's one of those things where it's not hard to recruit, but it is tedious. It's just like dialing the phone. And so if you guys can dedicate, like when you're selling, when the morning block of like the six to 8 a.m., the 5.30 to 7.30, you know, five to seven, whatever that is for you, if you can dedicate an hour or two to go add a bunch of people on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn that are licensed agents, that are sales professionals, that are sharp people, like that's very important. And then send some messages and then sell throughout the whole day. And then once you get done selling, you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, do the same thing in the compound effect of sending messages and creating conversations. Dude, you never know. Like when we first started, we, we basically bootstrapped from zero to VP off cold market messages on LinkedIn to people we did not know. And dude, we would send like a couple hundred a day and we would get like, we would send a hundred and get like one response or two responses. But that leads to dividends. Another example I'll give you is I'm sure you've seen her. If not, you definitely will soon. But like my best recruit in the business, like ever, not even FFL, just ever, was someone that didn't even speak the same language as me. Like I have a massive Spanish team that's doing almost a million dollars a month, if not more this month. And this is their 11th month in the business. How the heck did I get them? I like I took Spanish in high school. I speak a little bit of Spanish, like más o menos. I'm not like bilingual by any you know matter, but I added so many people on Instagram every single day. I was intentional. I liked their story. I would swipe up. I would say, you know, your looks like you're killing it. Like, hey, how long have you been there? And just creating conversations. And I struck gold. And me and Susanna connected. And from there, we talked. I had a Spanish speaker translate and talk. And then from there, it's like, holy crap! I blink. In 11 months down the road, they've recruited 100 agents from their, from their old company, and they have a huge book of business. They're helping their clients get in a better situation. They're, you know, calling leads, selling leads, all that kind of stuff. And so it's just an example, guys, of like, if you, if you stay consistent, you may not hit gold your first week or your first month or your first year. But if you keep on doing it, it only takes one or two people to blow up your business as your business partners and be, instead of just tie doing all the selling and recruiting, now, now there's, you know, this guy and this guy, and now that's what becomes powerful. When you can recruit people that have big networks, they have some experience, they're sharp, they're hungry, they're hardworking. It only takes a couple of people to look down a couple of months and you're like, holy crap, we're doing 10 times as much as we used to. Sure. That's good stuff. What would you say to people that, because you guys came from previous company, I know, you know, a couple of your big groups too have come from, they, they, they were recruited from different companies than they recruited a bunch of people from their own company. What would you say to people? Cause we have a couple on here right now that are in a network of a lot of licensed agents that came from a company with a lot of, obviously a lot of licensed agents there as well. 
what would you what would you tell them in terms of how quickly it can happen and can change just by bringing some people from the company so 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 fast i mean if 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 i'm being honest and you're being honest with yourself if you've been in this industry like you know like we are a different beast at ffl most the other companies like their setup is a pyramid scheme like that is what they are because the top person never sold the insurance they've been there for 10 15 20 years they're making a bunch of money but then you peel back the on and you look at the people that are selling and the mid managers do they ain't making any money like they're they're maybe on instagram they look like they're making money but they're not even like making like real money and so i think for you you show people the business but then like i said like dude you sell 20 30 grand a month you are making more money than 98% of the industry. And so if you can show people that and basically show them away, hey, you can do this, either work in you know, the same amount of hours you can make more or you can work more, make way more. Showing that is so powerful. And from there, like who do licensed agents know? Other licensed agents. And it just, it can create this snowball effect of like, you know, you recruit one, person that knows people in the industry and they get four or five, they recruit four or five. And the key is you can make a lot of money selling here. That's the main key. Most places you cannot, if, if really any other places. So if you show them quickly and you show them the plan and then they start making money, dude, like, like when people start making money, they want to recruit other people and they want to tell everyone about it because they're fired up. They're in their best situation ever. So that's the magic of this thing. If you can show people how to make money quick and show them the FFL system and get them selling, then that's that's what opens the floodgates and it can turn into like a, a crazy thing really, really fast. Sure. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, dude, what are some, and you kind of touched on this a little bit before, but what were some of your like daily, weekly, kind of monthly recruiting goals, but also how did you, how did you manage that? And what did that look like? Because, you know, when you, when you're selling 20, 30, even if you're selling more than that, you know, I've always heard people say like, sometimes even if you're selling 80 a month, it's maybe you don't need to be doing that much because you're taking a lot of time away from what you, what else you could be doing on the recruiting side. So how did you guys really balance that? Um, you've always been very honest, but like your schedule, you know, and not everybody wants to, you know, work 14, 16 hours a day, but obviously you guys, you guys got most of it, but like, yeah. Talk a little bit about just kind of the schedule and what that really looked like. And, you know, just go up, go from there. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like the, the early morning, that's your recruiting block. You're selling throughout the day. You're doing your other recruiting block at night throughout the day, you know, doing things like posting, you know, LinkedIn statuses and Facebook statuses and Instagram stories. That only takes a few seconds. So do that, you know, um, throughout the day, but something that, you know, like our, basically like our mentor, Grady Polson taught us and he kind of put the pressure on us is when you get to a point where you're issue paying and helping 20 families per month, you need to hire a staff if you can build a business. And for us, like we were super scared, you know, we were cash flowing a little bit, but it was nothing crazy yet. And we were nervous, but doing that one, it helps you. So now instead of one person with 24 hours in a day, you have two people with 24 hours. So you just duplicated yourself. And then all this stuff, like we call them money-making activities. Like what are, what's going to make you money? Dialing the phone, talking to agents, recruiting agents. And, you know, basically that's, those are the three things. And so anything else that, that someone else could be doing like a staff, like setting study vouchers, putting in, con putting people in contracting, um, you know, calling the carriers, you know, all that stuff, doing death stuff, like all that stuff, like, I don't, I haven't done that for so long. I don't even know how to log into my HCMS because I don't care about that. Like that's my staff's job. I don't need to know how to do that or do it. And so I think that's super important. Um, but besides that, I think like just duplicating yourself, like it would be foolish to be on here and be like, oh, like it's, it's me and it's Nina and we did everything. Like we recruit everything. Like, no, we didn't recruit everything. We recruited a couple of really good people. We taught them everything we knew. We poured it into them. Then they recruit a couple of people and they poured into them. And so instead of just me, and it, it's a team mission, dude, especially early on, it's like, I'm going to be selling, I'm going to be recruiting. Like, are you with me? Can you sell and can you recruit? And that's the power 
of the duplication where it's like, instead of, cause when it's you, I always tell agents and like people that are trying to build a team, your first, like getting the VP is the hardest because most of the time it's just you. It might be one or two other big producers that are stepping up and, and recruiting and, and doing calls like this and stuff like that, but it's just you. And so if you can duplicate yourself and now have a couple of people, like when you have like 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 and on people that are selling, posting on social media, meshing a hundred people a day, adding a hundred people a day, dude, that's now that's some serious, that's like making a serious dent and that's producing a lot of results. So the faster you can get people on board with you to join you and do that, that's just going to speed the process up and make it so much easier. What, um, what are some things that you, that you look for that you can kind of pick out from people in the beginning to know if they have kind of really what it takes to, to make this business work? You know, like what are some things that separate from what you've seen separate, you know, agents and also builders really within the first couple of weeks to a month? You know, what are, yeah. what are some things there? Um, I think there's a couple of things. I think, you know, work ethic, that's definitely super important. Um, I think, you know, independence um as in like you know silly stuff that that you could probably figure it out like figure it out like don't call me for you know how to log into your shirts today like that kind of stuff like you can figure it out there needs to be some sort of independence there because if there's not like this business is a, is a grown man and grown woman business like we have paid high comp for a reason like you need to be somewhat independent um but i think also like people that are plugged in that's super important and also people ask questions like when, when you have a new agent start and they dial the phone and they call you like four or five times in the first couple of days each day, I know this person is trying to get better. They're trying to learn, they're into it, they're excited versus the person that, you know, calls me once in a whole week. I'm like, dude, like, is this person even like working? Like, are they, are they excited? Like what's going on? And so um, those are probably the main things um, but also as a manager, it's your job to uh, kind of teach them and, and get them excited about the business. And so if you're doing your job about talking about, you know, how much you can get paid on the selling side, you know, the bonuses, you know, uh, building a team integrity, you do all that, then that's going to spark and that's going to help you and help them. It's going to spark more excitement and get them more like motivated because I think sometimes for some people when they see like a lot of people come into the business as okay cool i just got licensed i'm an insurance agent and i work for family first life and i'm in ties you know hierarchy or i'm in evans hierarchy like cool like i'm working for them and that is so that's just the wrong school of thinking like dude we are all commissioned this is your job this is your company even if you don't have one agent this is your company and so treat it like that like what a what a new business owner not try to market and get you know, new recruits, would they not try to get referrals for sales? Like, of course they would. And so if, if that person can see the vision and then from there take ownership, um, that's just so, so important instead of just, you know, I'm going to show up, I'm going to buy my leads, I'm going to call them, I'm going to, you know, not be involved, I'm not going to try to recruit. Like you need to, if they see the vision and they know what's possible, I think it helps them grasp that independence kind of mindset and like the go-getter kind of mentality versus just the, hey, this is just a nine to five kind of deal, like clock in, clock out, you know, make my two sales a week and call it quits. Okay. So another quick question for you. It's all been good, man. I appreciate all this. So how are you like, because I'm sure you've, we've all made mistakes in this business with high, with recruiting and recruiting the wrong people. What, were, what are some things that helped you like, um, target the right people that you want to be in business with versus almost being desperate and just pretty much hiring anybody that wants, you know, that, that has a pulse because we've all been there, but like, can you talk yeah. a little bit about getting into bits with the right people and kind of how you target that market? Yeah. Um, I would say the first thing guys is trust your gut. Like, you know, if I, I've had one situation and like, I, I knew it, I knew the dude was, you know, not writing good business. I knew that he was a sketchy dude. I knew that, you know, he wasn't a guy that I want to be in business with, but I just, you know, Oh, you know, maybe, it, maybe he has really good referrals or, you know, maybe like, and I, I knew. And so I would say, trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. 
you know, um, I, something I do every single morning is I look at my, you know, carrier, you know, advanced, um, sheets and basically see everything. And if someone, you know, is consistent, awesome. If someone hasn't been business in months and they start popping deals, I'm like, that's kind of weird. And I haven't talked to them. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take action also, like in terms of hiring, um, getting on zoom or FaceTime has been such a big deal, dude. I had a guy a couple of weeks ago, um, that may or may, may or may not be, a, you know, he, he's not, he's not going to be a good fit with us, but he may or may not be a good fit in the industry. And if I would, I, and I told a lot of people this, if I would have gotten the phone with him a year ago, I probably would have hired him because he was talking about how he had these, you know, uh, call centers and these, you know, people, you know, from different countries that were dialing and he was going to be a final expense telesales, you know, call center. And like, you know, my gut feeling, dude, just from being on Zoom instead of a phone call and seeing him and seeing his body language and seeing how he acted. I'm like, dude, this this might be a recipe for a debt disaster. This might be a dude that's just going to, you know, it, it's just not a good deal. And so getting on Zoom has been super important. Um, something else that Sean taught me is, um, you know, actually asking them about themselves and like digging deep. And so if you guys have ever had the chance to like sit in on like a recruiting call, or, like a meeting with Sean, like he almost over asked. And so like, he'll be like, you know, Ty, where are you from, man? Like your parent, your parents, are they still together? You know, what, you know, are they still alive? What's, you know, do you have any brothers or sisters? Where do you go to, where do you go to school? You play any ball? Um, you know, what do you do before this? Like almost like not an interrogation, but getting to know them. And if you can get to know people, usually you can kind of like sniff out some red flags if there are any, um, but you know that's that's pretty much it. Um, that's that's another reason why I really do like social media recruiting is because like you know if like I said like Zip Recruiter or something like that like if I call them in like I have no idea who they are. Like I'll try to get on Zoom with them and and that's my that's the main thing. Hopefully I can decipher on the Zoom call if I think they're a good fit. They're going to be someone that you know is going to be a rogue agent or someone that's going to actually be involved and you know you know, do, do the work and, you know, write a quality business, but on social media, it's so great, dude, because I can see, I can see pretty much like their resume. I can almost see like their life. I can see what they look like I can see who they hang around with. I can see what they post. I can see like, if they're, you know, profile pictures, like a cartoon character, like that's kind of weird. Like that they, they have no pictures. That's kind of weird. And so just kind of like being able to use that as like a screener um, has helped a lot. And I mean, dude, like, you got to be careful, but at the start, it almost is like, you know, you, if, if you have that desperation, but if you can fight it to find good quality, that's important. Now, am I saying that you only hire like the people that are like aces and like studs? No, I'm not because, you know, the people that come into this business, we've had a lot of people that they only sold, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 policies a month. Like they weren't a killer producer, but they knew a couple of people that turned out to be killer producers or managers and so all I'm saying is be smart. I would get on Zoom with them, really screen them, ask them good questions, get to know them. And then from there, just just watch. And if they're plugged in everything, you got nothing to worry about. But if they, you know, stop getting involved and you don't hear from them, they have these huge weeks or huge months, like, dude, be proactive because if you can stop it, if you can shut it down when it happens, instead of holding out hope that it's legit, most of the time it's not. And if you can get with that carrier rep and stop it and just diffuse it right there, that's going to be a lot smarter than waiting, you know, longer than that in the long run. Sure. Cool. Well, good stuff, man. Um, we can wrap this thing up. I know you're busy. Do you have anything else you want to throw in? Just anything about producing, building, anything there? It'll be good. Um, you know, I think, I think we pretty much covered everything, guys. I think, you know, just, you know, it starts with selling, recruit, stay intentional. Like that's, that's not the fun stuff. And that the recruiting stuff is going to be a delayed gratification. Like the cool thing about selling is you call someone, you make a sale, you get paid tomorrow. The recruiting thing is going to show up 60, 90, 120, sometimes even longer than that. But if you stay consistent, you will build a big team. I can promise you that. Um, and the other thing I, I would say is I'm super excited for conventions. So we have convention in well, like three months or so. Like it's, it's I think we're within like a hundred days now. It's super close. And so if I were you guys, what I would do is one, I would recruit and sell as much as I could up until next, up until the convention, because if you can have a good end to this year, you'll have the confidence and the experience and the skills to have a great 2023, but also the team that has the most people 
to convention is the team that has the most momentum and that will rise and, and pass everybody. And so if you guys can, you know, get everyone on your team there, you know, invite people that are interested in the business, that will give you guys such a big advantage. And then coming out of convention, that like second week after convention is usually always the biggest week in company history. And then it just kind of rides on from there. It goes into March, goes into April, goes into May and continues pretty much the whole summer just from that one event of those, you know, two or three days that people were around there. And also as like, you know, for me, for Nina, for a lot of people, you see what's possible. Like if you're, if you're a new agent, you're an agent that's kind of just getting by doing like your 10 families a month, 15 families a month, five families a month. Well, I would highly encourage you one to not only go, but stay around for the third night for the award ceremony. When, when we saw people walk across the stage, they were older than us, they were younger than us, there were different, you know, skin tones as us, there were different genders as us that had all different backgrounds. Like that's when you're like, dang, like if that guy or gal can do that, like I bet I can do this. And, and I'm going to go talk to them and ask them what they're doing. And, and also the other thing is you're going to find out, oh, they buy more leads than me. They work harder than me. Maybe they're a little bit better than me, but that comes from experience. But the point is, is everyone comes, you know, from different backgrounds and different experiences. And it's so powerful to actually see that. And for a lot of people, man, that's, that's a change when they see it, they're like, dang, you know what? I'm going to audit myself. I've been lazy. I've been, you know, skating by, I've been doing okay. I'm not taking the opportunity hundred percent serious. And so make sure you guys get there. It's super, super important and super, super impactful. Cool. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for getting on a lot of good stuff. Got a bunch of notes taken here. So I appreciate you hopping on, man. You got it. I'll see you guys in Miami in a few months. Yes, sir. We'll see you there, man.